Hey everybody, Mossfield Live Hello. presented by New Balance. It's signing day. Woo! Let's go. Yeah. yeah. First official day for athletes to sign the Division One program starting That's today, right. November 8th to November 15th. It is a big, big day. A really, um, you know, culmination of all the hard work for all these athletes who've put in all the years. It's a dream yep. for a lot of them. So uh, we have a big show. We have five athletes signing to their college program. Oof. We're going to have them on the show yep. through Skype and on phone calls, and we're all really excited for them. Our first guest is a guy that a lot of people know. Travis, you're going to handle this interview. Yeah, Noah Green's our first one coming up here, transfer from Kansas to Texas now at Duncanville, and we have him on the line. Will Grundy, our Texas webmaster, is out there in Duncanville right now, setting him up via Skype. So we're going to talk to Noah Green, hear where he's going to college. Will, Noah, how are you guys doing over there in Texas? One second, guys. All right, one sec here. Still working on getting him on the call, but this is a big commitment here. He's one of the top guys in the country in the 110 hurdles. One of the t in Duncanville is a really strong program. He won New Balance Nationals last year, national champion. So this is a big commitment that we're getting from Noah Green. We're really excited to have him on the show. So we are going to throw to him in just a second here. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see what he does in Texas this year, especially in the hurdles. You know, we talked about this uh, a couple of weeks back about his transfer from Kansas where he dominated in the, 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 the 110s and the 300s, and now he's going to Texas where historically that state is just really good. He should have some really, really good competition too because they have DeSoto, Duncanville, um, a lot of those southern Dallas area, Fort Worth area high schools in their district which is the step before uh, area, then region, then state in Texas. And that district is just so solid, as everybody knows, DeSoto, right. uh, you know, big name after they won the 6A state title a couple of years ago. So we should see him yeah. really get challenged here. Um, and then some really good hurdles have come out of just that little bit of area in Dallas. Yeah. And as we get Noah on the line, it's signing day. You know, we have everything up here. The phones are open, the lines are open, emailed, social DMs, let us know, tag us on Twitter. We're going to keep you updated throughout the show with some of the biggest signings this morning as they come in. So make sure you're hitting us up constantly because we're staying dialed into everything that's going on. On top of the five athletes we're going to call in and talk to directly and live on the show here, we're keeping you up to date with some of the top ones who have already signed so far this morning. So we're going to make sure to have that lined up. Brian, for you, who's someone that you've seen already this morning that stood out? Uh, I already saw two that just kind of popped up on, on Twitter here. Uh, the Woodlands College Park, Zach Williams. He's going to Oklahoma University. Uh, and then another Texas, Live Oaks, Cecilia Holmes is going to Baylor University. So those are two just quick ones that I saw just skimming through Twitter. Um, you know, and, and they're continuing to come. I, all you have to do is search. It's pretty easy. Just looking through and, and finding these names, and I'm sure we'll see more big names. We saw one day. this morning, Masai Russell out of Bullet hey School mm -hmm. in Maryland. Yeah. We're ready for Noah Green. All right, here we go. Trent, our guy, is telling us that Noah Green is ready to go over here with the interview. Noah, out in Duncanville, how you doing? Good, how are you? We're doing well over here. So first, I mean, you made that transition from Kansas to Texas. How's the Texas lifestyle been treating you so far? Uh, it's great. You know, we used to live here before, so it's just kind of get, getting back in the swing of things. And briefly, looking back at last track season, things really picked up for you after you won nationals in the 110 hurdles. Did you really feel the recruiting pick up after that point? Uh, yes. Like, once I hit the time that I hit at New Balance Nationals, phone calls started coming in, texts, emails, really started taking off after that point. And for you, that's a lot to handle. You know, all of a sudden, all these coaches, everyone starts contacting you. What was some of the best advice you got to handle the recruiting process? Um, some of the best advice was just getting to meet the coaches. You know, um, I'm going to be spending the next four years with the coach I'm going to choose. And it's just like, if I didn't have a good connection with the coach, then I shouldn't just go to the school. Right. And so let's dive into it. What were the top schools that you were looking at on your list? Um, some of the top schools was, one, obviously a good hurdle coach because that's what I'm trying to go and do in the future. And a good team chemistry was another big component. And the last component was good academic centers and uh, facilities. For, uh, I'm trying to go into biochemistry for pre-med, so really big part too. That's awesome. So Noah, without further ado, where are you headed next year? I'm proud to announce that I'll be getting my academic 
and athletic career at oh. university. Of <laughs> oh, nice. Dude, that's awesome. Congrats, Noah. Thank you. So let's jump right into Kentucky then. What stood out about Kentucky when you talked to the coaches? Was an official visit? What made that school stand out to you and why you're choosing to go there? Um, one of the biggest things was like a home away from home. Like everybody that I talked to that has already done the process has told me that once you step on the campus, you kind of know where you want to go. And that was a big part in my decision of going to Kentucky. You know, I love the whole staff, the athletes, the coach. Um, and then I got to meet some of the pros that actually trained there. And they just told me, like, hey, like, this is a really good place to be trying to be focused and continue your career on to the next level. Yeah, when you look at Kentucky and see the athletes they have there, when you talk to the coaches at what you can accomplish in college, do they also talk to you about how your track career could develop after college? And was that important to go to a program that could help potentially turn you towards a pro career? Yeah, it was actually a really big component in choosing Kentucky because uh, they have like five or six Olympians that are just hurdlers specifically that are trained there. So it's just like when I get to see them compete and I get to be at that level and practice is just a really big component of me choosing Kentucky. And we've seen some, obviously, Sydney McLaughlin's going to Kentucky, and now she's going there and trying to figure out if she's going to become a 100 hurdler, 400 hurdler, 400 meter runner. When they, when you were talking to these coaches and looking at what your potential avenues are in college, are they looking at you potentially as staying just with the high hurdles, or you might branch out, work on your range, maybe move up into the 400 hurdles as well? Yeah, when I was talking to Coach Flo, he was telling me that I don't have to be specific hurdles to continue my career, like. We're going to try to experiment with the 400, 100, 200, and just try a whole different range of events instead of just staying with the uh, 110s and point hurdles like Sydney's kind of doing. Yeah, and for this year, you know, you're with Duncanville. Duncanville is one of the most well-known programs in Texas, really strong in both the sprints and hurdles. When you look at the outdoor season coming up, what are the events that you're going to be focusing on there? Uh, well, I'm going to be focusing on main events like one hurdles and 300. But I'm still going to be doing like um, multiple relays and then some meets I'll be doing the 200 and 100, uh, doing a little bit more of those this year too. When you look at the landscape in Texas, Duncanville is in one of the most competitive districts and regions in the entire state. How excited are you to get in on some of these 4x1 and 4x4 relays and get a feel for that Texas track atmosphere? I'm super excited because uh, when I started taking off in my career like this past summer was when I got into competition. And just having that competition throughout the whole year at every beat is just going to be a great experience. And Noah, lastly, who are some people you want to thank who have helped get you to this point in your life and committing to Kentucky? Uh, I just want to thank all my supporters, uh, my family for always supporting me, all the coaches that I had because I kind of moved around a lot. And I want to give a special shout out to my dad who's been there throughout all the years. You know, He's always been there every meet to calm me down and keep, keep me pushing forward. Awesome. Noah, how, uh, how about who do you have joining with you today? Let's give a shout out for your companion here on the Miles Live show. Uh, shout out to all the Duncanville uh, family that's here out track and field. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, let's get him on camera. Let's go. Let's see the Duncanville track fam. Come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Shout out to Duncanville. Noah, shout out to you. Thank you so much for joining us and enjoy signing day. Thank you. Take care, man. All right. That's awesome. You know, that's really exciting. You like to see the vibe. That's why I love signing day. I think outside of the national championship, it's one, just one of the most fun days of the year. Everyone's pumped. Everyone's having fun. It's a lot of energy. Great to see Noah going to Kentucky. It's a phenomenal choice. I mean, he talked about all the pro connections there. And I think there's a clear path for him. You know, these athletes, a lot of looking at college. And we talked yesterday when we were looking at some recruiting things, how a lot of athletes, the reality is you're just not even going to score an NCAA championship. But for some guys like Noah, 
there's a very clear direction and also a post collegiate career. So I think this is a great choice for him and picking Kentucky. Yeah, for sure. Like the immediacy of, of getting on the track right away, uh, like yep. you just said, is going to be something that Kentucky's really going to value as he heads into that um, collegiate career. But I like how schools set up signing day too. Sometimes not every <laughs> school does it the same. Obviously, right there in Duncanville, they have a little bit of a setup for Noah. And after our phone call with him, uh, they're going to do another you know ceremony for him as he signs in front yep. of his school. So yep. that's going to be cool too. Yeah, really cool to get to see that, and you know, especially I noticed in Texas, it's huge. They have all the athletes from all the different things. I know last year we had uh, Fort Bend Marshall, and they had like all the athletes up on stage. They had the yeah. marching band, the cheerleaders. Like signing day is just it's one heck of a day. It's it's really cool to see how how communities come together yeah. around these athletes. Corey, I'm I'm really just fired up now after that, seeing all the <laughs> Duncanville crew. Who else do we have lined up here for the rest of the show? Uh, so we got. Caitlin Collier from Bull School in Jacksonville. She signed this morning uh, at her school, but she's going to be on the phone with us. Coming up next, after Caitlin Collier, we have a really great athlete, Molly Bourne out of Shawnee Mission Northwest uh, in Kansas. Uh, she has decided a couple weeks back that she would go to Oklahoma State after um, visiting a couple, couple schools, but she's coming off an injury too. So she had to navigate that process as she was sort of down for the season. So that's, well, that will be interesting to talk to her about that. And then we got uh, who else do we got? Uh, Chikari Richardson, one of the mm -hmm. top talents uh, mm -hmm. in the girls' field um, in, in Dallas. She's going to be hopefully on the phone with us, maybe on Skype. We'll, we'll figure that out in due time. And then uh, you're going to be talking to a man, Dustin Horder, out of Lakota East. Yeah. Uh, the guy has been tearing up cross country all fall, and it'll be interesting to hear what he has to say about that season. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a video up on Milesworth's Facebook. Thanks to Betsy Horder for helping us get a video from Dustin signing and the Florida Runners Facebook shout out to our crew down in Florida have a live video that they were from Bull School this morning as well so across the country we got you guys covered with yeah. signing day one signing that's not going to happen uh, over this week is our number one runner on cross country Brody Hasty out of Brentwood um, mm -hmm. he has told us that he's going to make one more visit after nationals and then he's going to decide on his school we, he's already told us that he's looking at NAU Oregon Stanford and I believe uh, can't remember the third school but uh yeah he's going to be one that's going to decide on the next signing period so mm -hmm. we'll have to wait for that um but let's try to get our girl caitlin collier on the line here from ball yeah. school um see if we can't reach her yeah she's one of the top recruits when we look at recruiting rankings who, who's at the top of the list i know brian you spent a lot of time digging into those yesterday what were you impressed by when you're looking at caitlin's resume who oh, you got to look at that 800 meter speed and what she brings to the table um, you know, and Corey brought it up best yesterday at Pan Ams and her finish there, just absolutely incredible. At Festival of Miles, she ran that 203, um, you know, back in 2017. So, you know, big, big 800 meter stud coming. And then also just in the cross country course, what she can bring to the table as well. Yeah, so. some really solid range. You like to see that out of those distance recruits. As a junior, 203 and 800, uh, really solid. What can she do as a senior? Can she come? Hello? Caitlin, hey, this is uh, Corey with Milesplit. We're on Milesplit Live right now. Hey, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how's it going? I heard you, you signed this morning at bowl school, right? I did, yeah. We had a nice little ceremony with um, three of the other girls on the track team, uh, Rachel Shapiro, Monet, and Nia. Awesome. That's, that's really cool. Um, so, Caitlin, you, we know we heard you signed to Stanford. Uh, what was that process like? Mm -hmm. How many you know schools have you... Were you looking at, were on the resume, on the table there, and how many contacted you, and what was that process like narrowing it down to Stanford? Okay, so I ended up taking uh, four out of my five visits. I uh, went to Duke, uh, then Georgetown, and Princeton, and then finally uh, Stanford. So it was definitely busy just because I took all my visits on back-to-back -back weekends. Oof. But, um, I mean, yeah, I know. It was it was definitely a little bit stressful keeping up with schoolwork, but, I mean, in the end, I think I made the right decision, and... Even though the process was crazy, it was really enjoyable. And I mean, we're very fortunate as athletes to have that process to help us choose a school that would be like the best fit for us. So in the end, I, I'm really pleased with it. Awesome. Well, so as that visit process happened, how did you kind of manage the, the workload balance of school and training for cross country and going to all these meets mm -hmm. and still attending all these, these visits to these high, high profile universities? Yeah, I mean, I had to really be on top of everything. Um, I just basically would go to all my teachers before I left and I'd talk to them and tell them what I was doing and if I had to make up any work or I had to submit a lot of assignments early and just things like that just to make sure that 
I would get credit. And so it was definitely a lot of balancing, but um, at the same time, it was, it was manageable. So, I mean, it's just a lot of work, but you just got to keep up with it all so you don't get mired down in it all. Gotcha. So when you went to Stanford, what was the big draw there? What did you, when you saw it, what made you finally say, like, Stanford is the place for me. This is where I want to be. You know, what set it apart from, you know, Duke and the other schools mm -hmm. that you looked at? Yeah, I mean, it just, I don't know. It's just the team there was so, well, all the teams that I visited were very welcoming. But, I mean, there's just a vibe on the Stanford team that I just really picked up on that, all the girls are really hard workers and they all have like a similar goal and they all just want to get better. So, I mean, just that aspect really drew me in towards um, the program and also the school is beautiful itself. And it's um, definitely one of the top institutions in the country. So, I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to turn down an offer like that. So, and I mean, I know I've been, I'm sort of foreign to the West coast, but I think it's time for a change and I'd just like to explore the country. So, I mean, I think it'll be a cool experience to get to switch coasts for a little bit. That's awesome. And then, you know, you look at the, the class there and you kind of touched on it and mentioned it. There, there's a couple of seniors and juniors, but there's a lot of freshmen and sophomores. You know, you, you look at Hannah DeBalzi, Jess Lawson, mm -hmm. Nevada Moreno, Julie Hamek, the list goes on and on of, of girls. Fiona O'Keefe, Christina Aragon, who all have signed there in the yeah. past two years. You know, what's that like yeah. joining such a, an impactful, powerful squad of, of ladies there who have impressive high school resumes as well? Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, I mean, Stanford's already ranked very high. But, I mean, with all the potential that they have, I have no clue where we're going to go. But I'm just excited to see what happens. I mean, it seems like the girls work very well as a team. So people say that Stanford's made up of a lot of individual athletes who have had a lot of success. But at the same time, when I went, I could see that they all work together very well and they're all very supportive of each other. So I'm excited to see where the, um, the team goes in the next few years. Now, for you, was there any, any one girl that, um, you know, stuck out to you or kind of guided you through your, your visit, um, your trip, and, and who was that and what kind of an impact, you know, did they leave personally? Was there anything personally that they said to you that's like, wow, this is, this is the program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, the girl I stayed with was Sarah Walker, and she's also an 800 runner. So, I mean, she definitely led me through everything. I mean, she showed me a few of her classes, and I just got to hang out with her and she was very honest with the um, process. She wouldn't like act like anything was greater than it was. And she was, um, I'm really fortunate to have had her as a um, guide around campus. So I mean, definitely a shout out to her. So she definitely helped draw me into um, the program. Um, on all of your visits, what was there anything that surprised you? Where you're like, oh my gosh, like I remember when I took visits back when I was doing the visit thing. And there was one room that I went in, and these guys had like visit thing, Brian. clothes hanging from the ceiling, like dirty laundry everywhere. And I was like, "Oh my gosh! Like, what is this college life? Was there anything like that on any of your visits that you're like, whoa, <laughs> like this is crazy?" Um, not really. Other than I have like a pretty decent sized broom, so having to stay in a um a, such a small room with two people uh. was a little bit foreign to me. But I mean. Honestly, nothing really stuck out. At Stanford, Sarah had a lot of snacks in her room, <laughs> which I think that's gonna that's what my room's gonna look like when I end up going. So, nice. I mean, nothing like bad, but it's just yeah, it's just a whole different experience, really. Uh, so everything was sort of different. That's yeah. called college life, Caitlin. Yeah. Get ready for it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, well, I'm not ready for it. <laughs> well, I actually had one question. Uh, Caitlin, you know, yeah. you're very successful on the track. You've made your mark there. But in cross, last mm -hmm. year you won states in Florida and you qualified for NXN. And um, did the recruiting process for you this, this year impact cross country? Because you haven't really raced at all this year. Um, I mean, it did. I really want to keep up with cross country when I go to uh, college. So I made sure to um, tell all the coaches that I met that, that's what I wanted to um, do, but I mean, it, I didn't. I haven't been able to race because of my foot. I've just been taking some time off, and um, I mean, right now it's just I have to stay healthy for track and my late, later years of running. So I definitely wanted to um, make sure I got my point across about how I wanted to stay with cross country, and I just think it's a great, a great change from track. It's so team oriented, and it's just a different. It's just so different from running on the track. So, I mean, it's just it's just a great experience that I feel like I'd want to have when I go off to college. Do Florida distance runners not get the respect they deserve? 
Did I get the respect they deserve? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like, yeah. I feel like track's definitely, like, our sport's definitely bigger in, on the West Coast and East Coast, but, yeah. Awesome. So now, moving forward, uh, you know, with the rest of this cross-country season and the track season, what are your, some of your big goals, and how are you going to um, continue to improve on your, your season last year? Yeah, um, well, starting with the 800, I, I, I haven't really sat down and thought about goals, but obviously just be to PR at least. I mean, I want to try to get as close as I can to two flat just because breaking two is like one of the biggest barriers that 800 runners want to achieve. So, I mean, that's definitely a goal that I would want to strive for. I mean, if not this year, then in my following years in competing. And I mean... I want to try to PR in the mile because I just didn't PR last year in it, and I know I have a better mile in me, so I'd like to see where I go in that event, too. Awesome. And then last question for me. Um, mm -hmm. How do you see yourself fitting into the Stanford squad in the future? What are you really you know, excited about and, and fitting in there with those girls? Yeah, I'm super excited about um, – well, first of all, like, I'm excited for cross-country because it's just – I feel like cross-country, I haven't really had a full experience with that yet. Just because Florida, there's not really any real cross-country courses. It's just sort of like you go to a horse park or it's just a flat, hot, like no trees and sort of miserable. <laughs> but I feel like on the um, West Coast, there are going to be a lot of fun races that I've just never, like with type of courses that I've never really gotten to race on. And also just getting to know all the um, all my new teammates and seeing what we have in store for um, NCAAs and just everything beyond that. So we'll see what happens. Awesome, Caitlin. Well, I mean, do you guys have any yeah. other questions for? No. Thank you for being on the line with us for uh, Mile Split Live, Caitlin. It's uh, been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. Uh, best of luck in your track season. Uh, we will, I'm sure we'll talk to you at some point in the future in the spring. Yep. So uh, take yep. care and best of mm -hmm. luck. Okay? Thanks, guys. Yep. All right, see ya. Stanford, man. Stanford just keeps <laughs> pouring keeps on up. the gas, yep. man. Holy well, cow. Not Oregon, so we're talking about a different West Coast school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But for a while there, we were talking about a lot of athletes that went to Oregon, but Stanford. Stanford women. And it's, yeah, I really like the fact that she's sticking with cross country. You yeah. look at her potentially following the footsteps of Sammy Watson, who we look at as one of arguably the best mid distance runners in high school history. Sammy never could quite break that, break that two minute barrier, mm -hmm. but she had a sneaky good cross season last year. She had really good races, finished high at the state meet, feds, NXN regional. Didn't quite have the performance maybe she could have had, uh, that she wanted the national championships, but she raced through cross. She got in that endurance base and then just took off through the entire track season. So you see that Caitlin now potentially following those footsteps, and she said she's going for it. Mm -hmm. She wants sub two. That's one of the those barriers in mid-distance running for women. That it's just that this like you think about like sub four for like men is one of those right. iconic marks. Sub two and eight hundred is there for women. And that's really awesome. I'm glad that she's setting her goals high and not that all oh, this marks unattainable. I don't, yeah. I don't want to like maybe beat my PR of 203, and if I break two, that's great. And she's, oh no, already she's going for that sub right. two. And I, I love that. I love that mentality. I think that's what you need for athletes like that to be able to go and take it to the next level. And I think also on that team that she's going to need that mentality and that next level thinking because, you know, with Christina Aragon, they're just alone in that 800. She brings so much talent and for them to work together in the future, it'll be really, yeah. really cool. And then, you know, I like the, pet, the fact that she mentioned, like, I want to stick with cross country, like you said. I, I think cross country, like track, sometimes we get away from it a little bit because it, it is a little bit more of an individual thing. And cross country really does build that team bonding and that team atmosphere. Right. Uh, all into one. So for her to be like, yeah, I still want to be part of this group and this team, and she knows that that, that group of girls is so good and talented, and it, it's awesome to see. She know. did comment, too, that she wants to focus a little bit on the mile, too. 446 yep. PR from, I believe, uh, two years ago. I mean, she could really make a mark on that, that race as well, um, looking forward. So, um, you know, she's already one of the best in Florida historically, so we'll, it'll be interesting to see where she goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Our, our next caller uh, that we have to get on the line is Molly Bourne, six-time uh, state champion in Kansas. Yeah. Uh, is going through a stress, stress fracture in her right foot this cross-country season, so she hasn't been able to race, but she uh, committed to Oklahoma State earlier a couple weeks ago and uh, signed today, so we're going to try to get her on the line right now. Awesome. Yeah, you know, Caitlin, too, Collier talked about visiting Stanford and 
I've been able to visit the campus a couple of times. Uh, my mom actually played basketball and field hockey for Stanford. And I remember too, coming from the East Coast, uh, you know, Northeast kind of weather, the first time I visited that Stanford campus, you're like, whoa, this is pretty cool. It's gorgeous. And Caitlin talked about it in her official visit. And that's an impact for some athletes. You come into that and it's, it shocks you. Whole new you. world, whole new world. Yeah. Oh, oh, the number you've dialed. That is not a correct number. <laughs> Getting the wires mixed here, trying to get Molly born on the phone. But it is really interesting. She, Molly's written some blogs for us, also yeah. for Kansas Mile Split, just about going through that process of being one of the top-ranked athletes coming into this season, and now an injury sets you back. It's your senior year. You want to win a state championship. You want to improve, set new PRs. You want to make your name known at the national level. And, it, and something's out of your control derails everything you had set that tour. So she goes in and has talked about the mindset and the mental approach and all those shifts. And she really might have given me the wrong number. Yep. Okay. So I've been talking to Molly, getting this set up. Uh, she gave me a different number recently, uh, but I'm just going to call her other phone and this may not work. This take two. We'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep trying. <laughs> this, is actually, we'll, this is take we'll three, actually. Work. Okay. <laughs> We've got a pretty good record at making things work. That's the benefit of going live. Yes. We do it live. It's the only way to do it. Remember, keep sending us your track signings on the social Hello? medias. Hey, Molly, this is Corey with Milesplit. Hi. Hey, so I called that other number you gave me, and it was <laughs> disconnected. I don't know if there was like a digit wrong or, or something, but I tried to call the other number. Oh, well, this is fine. <laughs> Huh? Oh, that's good. She said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're on the phone now, obviously, with you. You signed with Oklahoma State. Uh, you know, big um, signing there. How do you feel to lock down your your you know your your college future, basically, with Oklahoma State? Um, it's just a great feeling. I was kind of in a stressful fall. I'm trying to choose um, which program because all the ones I looked at were just so great. Um, but it's a big relief to finally um, find the right college for me. You told us Iowa State, Minnesota, and Utah were the other schools that you looked at. Um, how did you separate those four from each other? How difficult was it to find maybe you know one from those four? Oh, so difficult. Um, all of those other schools, I would be so fortunate to run for them. Um, they kind of just came down to how I felt when I was there on the visit. And did you have a final two between Oklahoma State and another school? Yeah, I was between Oklahoma State and Iowa State. Okay, so so w w how did Oklahoma State ultimately separate itself from Iowa State for you? Um, well, I love the team um, and the coach. Um, I, I just um, had a feeling there when I was on the visit. Any, any particular, like, cool things you saw at Oklahoma State, whether it was food, whether it was uh, uh, location, um, sites, anything interesting that really you picked up on? Um, well, I actually have um, family that lives there. My uncle is a professor at the college, so um, I kind of grew up going down to Stillwater every year. Okay. Um, you told us earlier in the year that, you know, part of the recruiting process that was difficult for you was that when you would talk to these schools, you know, as you were injured um, with this stress fracture, you started to learn, you know, what schools you know, really wanted you and what schools were sort of putting on a front. Can you explain that, that feeling and, and maybe what you went through as you were trying to learn ultimately where you wanted to, to spend the next four years of your life? Um, yeah, well, definitely the stress fracture was definitely a bummer, um, but it definitely helped a little bit in this recruiting process for sure because I definitely didn't want to go to a school that um, didn't want me after the stress fracture um, because that's just a part of running. And... Um, yeah, and also I had a lot of extra time with Fox. I wasn't racing to go on some visits. Yeah, so was that easier for you to go on these visits as you weren't racing, or was it a weird feeling talking to coaching coaches knowing that you weren't racing in the fall? Yeah, um, it was it was a little strange. Um, I mean, they just had to go off of um, last season's um, results and stuff, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it was kind of nice um, not having to worry about my cross-country season and just kind of focusing on um, the future. So did you have an a, a athlete at Oklahoma State that showed you around, that shadowed you, that kind of gave you the, the, the lay, lay the land in uh, still water? Yeah, um, well, the entire team was so nice. But um, my host was um, Chelsea Jarvis, and she was just, um, yeah, she was just a great host. She kind of showed me around still water, um, showed me what the school was all about. Cool. Um, so, 
you know, cross country has ended uh, in Kansas and, you know, you're still recovering. What stage are you at right now in your recovery? Um, right now I'm just kind of getting back into running. Um, it, um, it's been kind of nice. I've been running like, um, just a few miles, but, um, I'm kind of getting back to kind of feeling how I was before. Now, would you run, do you have a, a timetable for when you might get back on the track? Do you think you're going to be healthy enough when you, when the spring season starts? Uh, yeah, I hope that um, by the beginning of track season, I'll kind of be ready to go. All right. And, you know, you're, we obviously mentioned that you were a six-time Kansas State champion. Uh, you won the 1600 and 3200 last year. What are some of the goals for you this year as you step forward into your senior season? Um, well, I really like a successful recovery for sure um, and definitely just to um, help out my team in any way I can. All right. You don't have any, like, soup, like, you know, you're dreaming, you know, this is my dream to finish out my senior season. What's sort of perfect world scenario? Molly Bourne goes out on top in Kansas. Well, I'd love to um, kind of make it back to the times I was running before um, and definitely maybe PR and hopefully um, every event. Awesome. All right. Well, congratulations on your signing to Oklahoma State. They get a great athlete. Um, you know, we will we'll see how you do in, in the spring, and I'm sure we'll keep in touch. So uh, thank you so much for being on Milesbit Live, Molly. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, take care. Oklahoma State, really strong program, distance running, dominant in Big 12 over the last decade, really. They just keep bringing these athletes in. You know, Kayla Edwards now, one of the more well-known athletes at the collegiate level. She's running pro with Adidas, now training with Emma Coburn up in, and Alicia, Alicia pra up in Colorado. So there's a clear path, I think, for elite athletes, Oklahoma State, both cross country on the track. They're always there, conference champions, and now potentially moving the elite athletes up to the pro level. So I think this is a great choice. This can be a great fit for her out there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have a bunch of signings that happened already that t uh, through the next, you know, the, the past couple of hours. You know, what yeah. are some of the major ones that we've seen? You know, we already mentioned a couple from Texas, Masai Russell. Anyone yeah. else that we've seen? Since yeah, then? you know, one I think that's flying a little bit under the radar is Kennedy Simon out of Georgia. She's multiple times state champion, 23 mid, 23 high in the 200, 52 in the four. She was top five at Brooks Bar in the 400 last year. Really, really strong spinner, one of the top sprint recruits in the entire country. She just announced this morning she's signing to Texas. Oh, wow. So she's coming here to Austin. And following the footsteps of Serenity Douglas, Serenity Douglas coming from Georgia was one of the top sprint recruits two years ago. She had a phenomenal first season last year for Texas in the sprints and running on those relays. So now you got another Georgia athlete coming over here to UT. I think that's a great pickup for Texas to get a sprint stud, obviously one of the most well-known sprint programs in the entire country over here in Austin with the athletes that they produced at the collegiate all the way up to the professional level. Texas is always in the mix, too, for that team title at indoor and outdoor for NCAAs. I think it's going to be a great fit for her. I think she has that transition to having some athletes from Georgia already on this team. So Kennedy Simon, shout out to you. It's a great signing for her and for Texas. She's going to be a great fit elite sprint athlete now, just strengthening the Longhorns moving forward. Yeah, and one of the top recruits on the Flow XC rankings and our top 50 rankings on the girl side, too. So that for sure is a great signing with the Longhorns. Uh, real quick, I just found another signing, uh, Aiden Owens. Um, he's from Northern Allegheny, or North Allegheny in Pennsylvania. All right. He's one yeah. of the top decathletes in the country. Uh, went to New Balance Nationals last year, did really well. Uh, he is signing with uh, USC. Nice. So, big right. pick up there for the Trojans. All right. Yeah, so it was interesting last year, we saw that USC had a lot of signings at the late signing period. When we came in last year, we, look at, we looked at everything we got through the first couple months, early commitment, signing day. USC wasn't really on the radar at that point as being up in our rankings in terms of the top collegiate recruiting classes. But once we got to the late signing period, USC picked up a lot of those star athletes who hadn't committed through November, December, and early and later on. And we still, we're seeing that right now. We're not seeing USC really picking up these stars. But if things go like they did last year, we're going to see that coming later on. So it'll be interesting to see how USC develops here because they did have a really strong recruiting class last year, especially in the sprints. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if they can keep that going. And that's one of the more story track programs out there. So 
I think that even though they haven't really been on our radar much this season, that we shouldn't sleep on them. They'll definitely keep coming. Yeah. And uh, we're going to try to pick up with Shikari Richardson out of Dallas Carter, uh, one of the top sprint recruits uh, in the nation uh, from Texas. Um, you know, it'll yeah. be exciting to see because she has not announced where she's going to college yet. She's doing that today in Dallas Carter. Uh, so let's try to get her on the phone right now. Yeah, I mean, she's looking at, you talk about powerhouse sprint programs. Yeah. You look at her list of potential schools, yeah. just check them all off the list. I mean, she's been a powerhouse and a force Hello. in Texas sprinting. Hey, Lauren, this is uh, Corey yes. with Miles Split. Um, we're trying uh -huh. to get Shikari on the line. Is it possible to talk to her? Yes, hold on, hold on. All right. Hello. Hey, Shikari. Hi. How's it going? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, w you're live with Miles Split Live here. We're talking college signings today. Now, I know that you did not announce anything yet. Have you made your decision on your college choice? Yes, I've made my final decision, and right now I am sitting in my conference waiting to announce it. Ooh, so is there any chance we can get an early preview of this announcement on the phone here? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So you want us to call you back? How about that? Why don't we call you yeah. back? What, all right, okay. what time are you making your official signing? Um, I think we're going to be starting um, after, you know, after the phone call, after I get off the phone call. So after that, um, that would be the best time to call back. So okay. uh, all right. In 30 about, minutes from now? Sure. All right, we'll give you a call afterward. Okay. All right, thank uh, you. Okay, bye-bye. All right, bye. <laughs> Like Fort Knox there. Yeah, you know, no, she'll give up where she want to go. <laughs> hey, man. No. They don't mess around in Texas. <laughs> like, I don't care that your mouth split. I'm no. announcing what I'm announcing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so. she's looking at Florida, LSU, <laughs> Texas Tech. She's looking at some of the top programs in the country. It'll be interesting to see where she goes. Even within that Dallas-Fort Worth area, those schools have had good success with the top sprinters. Kayla Harris is now over there at Texas Tech. Courtney Johnson, who was one of the top four race spinners and spinners in the state a couple years ago, was at LSU. Right. So there's some interesting connections there. You talk, look at official visits. A few minutes ago, I talked about Kennedy Simon. You look at Serenity Douglas having that Georgia connection, right. feeling more comfortable at UT. So, if the, so we'll see if that factors into it and where her decision's at. But I do know, um, texting Dustin Horner right now, he is ready. Oh. Dustin Horner let's, is ready. Let's to go talk. with Dustin. So we're going <laughs> to nice. give Dustin Horner nice. a call. He's ready to roll. He announced his commitment a little while ago, but signed officially this morning to Indiana. So we're going to get him on the line, talk to him about that. You know, top guy. Officially now we can say that he is the <laughs> yeah. top dog in Ohio after a long back and forth season there. I want to hear about that D1 race yeah, too. Yeah, that was, that was nice. That was amazing. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Dustin, how's it going? Good. You, Travis? Good, good. Dustin, you are now official. It's official. You signed that piece of paper this morning. How good did it feel? It felt great, honestly. Just looking forward to the future. And um, me and Coach Helmer and Coach Poor do an awesome job with the guys they have right now. And I'm just excited to run with Ben Beach and Kyle Mallon, Bryce Millar, and some of the other guys that are there. And just really looking forward to the future. And uh, just really embracing it, so that foot, it was really relieving. Yeah, you know, when you look at that crew they have out there in Indiana, obviously Ben Veach, one of the top recruits, Bryce Millar, the top athlete coming out of Fayetteville Manlius in New York on the cross-country scene. Did that play into your decision with Indiana and knowing that they had a really strong group of young guys and this is the team that's building for a future and a success in the years to come? Yeah, I mean, um, they're not – as, as Coach Boyer and Coach Homer would probably tell you, they're probably not where they want to be right now. But um, also just based off the recruiting class that they brought in this year, they got some 410 milers, some 9-minute um, 2 milers. Um, and what I could add to that group was exciting to think about. Um, and also to think about, you know, running alongside Ben Beach and Kyle and, uh, yeah. and Bryce and all the other guys, how fun that would be to, de to be able to develop over the next four to five years um but those guys uh especially the class they're bringing in this year with a whole bunch of freshmen we're going to be together for four or five years just grinding yeah. out workouts together and all at the same caliber so when you think about it that it gets you really excited and um coach Bohr told me kind of as the recruiting process went on that um 
they would be the happiest team in the nation to get me. Uh, so that was it was pretty exciting to think about, you know, how how much I could add to the team. Um, yeah. And certainly that's the kind of contribution I want to make. And when you look at that, and the coach is saying they're happy to have you now, does it make you more proud to be able to sign that piece of paper and commit to the school now that you can officially say that you're the top dog in Ohio? Yeah, I mean, get, having the state meet over with is definitely a huge relief, and, and signing the paper is big. Uh, I just want to get to work, you know. Uh, <laughs> looking forward to Indiana, and I want to get out there and grind some workouts with these guys, but obviously we've got a track season to take care of in high school, and then we can move on. But, yeah, it's uh, I'm extremely happy to sign with Indiana. Mm-hmm. I think overall they were my best fit throughout the process. So yeah, um, just but really want to get to the grind of things. Yeah, and we definitely want to jump and just hit one with little bit. We know there's some interviews out there already talking about state race, but this weekend you ran the Ohio State Championships. You had one of the craziest finish of that we've seen so far, the state champs, hundreds, tenths of a second separating you into getting that win. Talk about just the final stages of that race and that mentality. This is your senior year. You know, not going to let someone take that championship away from you. Walk us through the final 100 meters of that race. What was going through your mind at that point? Yeah, so, I mean, the whole goal um, for three and a half years, uh, just me and, my, me and my coaches, to win as many state championships as we possibly can. And um, when it comes down to the last 100 meters, um, you really just sit there and think, um, am I going to regret this if I don't go all out? If I, if I, like, am I going to regret this if um, I get passed and I feel like I could have put more on the line or could have gone, gone harder to get the win? So that was kind of the culmination of thoughts I had in my head. And, and in the last 100 meters, I knew I could kind of catch Conan off guard. Um, and so I just kind of just started dead sprinting as hard as I could. Um, I mean, we practice stuff like this. I, I try to yeah. chase down my coach because he's actually <laughs> training for a marathon himself. So... We run strides together, and I let him do a little nice. head start, and then I chase him down. Yeah. So, yeah, we had prepared for this kind of thing, and it happened in the 1600 meter at the Ohio State track meet. Um, it was me versus Arjun Ja, and it came down to the last 50. So I had been in this situation before where Conan yeah. probably had not. Um, and so that kind of experience really helped me, but it was a huge relief to go to that line, number one. And I never really doubted my abilities, but... I knew I knew I had a shot to win it. I knew that I could never give up on myself, and um, so at that point it was just I got to get the win, and I got to do yeah. it for my school and my teammates, and yeah, that's about it. And when we look at you know athletes like yourself, top prospects, you're looking at a lot of strong programs. All those top programs in the country are looking at you. Everyone's offering. All these are all good academic schools. They're all good athletic schools. There's all good coaching. There's all good facilities. There's not, there's a pretty level playing field in terms of what these top programs can offer to student athletes in terms of athletics and academics. For you, what was that ultimate deciding factor that tipped the scales and led you to choose Indiana? I will say one factor that really um, came up that I didn't really expect to be a huge factor was um, the proximity to Ohio. Uh, Indiana is far. It's two and a half hours away from my house, but you might think that's far, but it's not extremely far. I could be able to come home, um, and that was a big factor that I didn't I didn't really care about the distance uh, going throughout my whole recruiting process. I, I checked out Stanford, checked out Northern Arizona, I checked out Iowa State. So all those schools were a lot farther away, um, and so being at Indiana, that was a little bit of comfortability. I would have I would have mm-hmm. the ability to come home whenever I needed to, or come up and see my sister race, her conference race, or state, or something like that. Um, so that was one big factor. And then, um, also, I mentioned before that, you know, Coach Poor and Coach Homer, um, they just told me how much I would mean to their program, and yeah. um, they've made All-American caliber guys. I know Homer's got about, like, 400-plus All-Americans he's created. So, I mean, his training program works. Um and Coach Borges told me, you know, we'd be the happiest team in the nation to get you. And uh, I mean, that was reflective on when I was when I told him I was gonna when I was gonna come. He was just extremely excited, and he wants to get crack, and I want to get cracking. And um, all the guys were texting me, "Can't wait to be your teammate and stuff." And, awesome. Um, so that was that was a very big moment for sure. 
And lastly, you know, like you said, it's still time to get to work here in high school. The NXN Midwest Regionals coming up, first national regional meet. How are you feeling going into that? Feeling pretty excited. Uh, last year, I didn't really know what to think going in. Um, but this year, you know, we got Danny Kilray, Dylan Jacobs, Gabe Fendel. These are guys I've been with yep. before. I know how they race. Um, I don't know. It, sh it should be interesting uh, to see who else kind of pops up since uh, to fill the gap that Jack Aho left when, when he mm -hmm. went to college. So um, I'm hoping, you know, just to maintain with the pack and just kind of roll with things and see how things play out. But, um, yeah, it's definitely a huge goal of mine um, to qualify again. The Midwest is pretty loaded, but I um, feel, feel pretty good about it. And just this week of training leading up to it, and just thinking about uh, the gear reveal at NXN and thinking about how <laughs> cool of an experience yeah. that was. So just uh, that, will, that will be motivating me going into this week. Yeah, absolutely. Dustin, thanks so much for joining us. It's been great. Uh, shout out to all the Team Hoarder fans out there. We know that you're all big fans of Mob Split, so we're all big fans of yours. We're happy to show you guys all some love. Dustin, thanks so much for joining us, and best of luck to you this weekend, and hope you can qualify for nationals out there. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, and uh, go Hoosiers. Yeah, all right. I'll talk to you later, man. Yeah, Indiana, here we go. A little powerhouse program is starting to develop there. They haven't, you know, broke the sound barriers and, you know, shocked us with some of the recruiting classes, but they're picking up those guys and they're building a strong team. He already mentioned guys like Millar and Veach, and they're picking up 410 milers across the board. And so this is going to be an interesting team to watch in the next couple of years to see how they can develop these young guys and see if they can start making some waves at the NCAA level. He said Indiana was the happiest team in the nation to get him. <laughs> well, only one team gets him, so they're the happiest. But um, I talked to Mark Dwyer yesterday about Dustin Horder, and uh, when he races, uh, he is the – you know, unmitigated favorite in every race that he enters. So it's like you go into the state race um, this, you know, past weekend and you're favored to win and your opponents view you as someone that they're sort of scared about. So, I, you know, he's had to battle with pressure, a lot of the expectations with him, you know, needing to win races. And I think he's handled it really, really well. And I love the, the way he spoke about um, that Division I race. He couldn't let, leave anything behind in the final moments. He's worked for that all his life. And, you know, he would regret something if he didn't put everything out on the line. So yeah. um, you know, he's had a great season, and he's really met all the expectations that people have set for him. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited to see what he can do now at the next great. level. Yeah, and great to see him watching the race in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, any other additions to the uh, signings today? Yeah, we got a couple more that I just looked up. Uh, Maisie Larson, she's the Nebraska uh, Class B state champion. She's signing state with champion. Baylor. Uh, we also All have right. Colton Crum in the pole vault. He's signing to Notre Dame. He's fourth best in the class of 2018. He's vaulted 17-1. So that's Baylor. a big pickup for Notre yeah. Dame there uh, wow. on the field side of the events. Yeah, All right. absolutely. All right, so... For those of you who are tuning in right now, they probably don't know. Are we going to give Gary Richards another chance? <laughs> I, I, or think, we just we, I think we it? have to. Uh, I don't think we're running short on our time here <laughs> for the end of the show. We got a lot of the people company well, trying to get the studio we get, space. Why don't we get her coach on the phone? Give it like, one more yeah. shot. Hey. But we do have a second show. For those of you watching, we're going to come back at 2.30 p.m. Central Time to update you even more. We have another whole group of elite athletes coming out. We're going to talk to then because signing day is just nonstop going through so we're going to be back at 2 30 and we're going to talk about everything that we're seeing between now and then down. we have more athletes make sure you keep talking to us on social media letting us where you let us know where you're going and if you want to get on that show we still got spots open so yeah. let us know tweet at us at mile split phones everything we got all our stuff is blowing up right now because there's so much happening in the yeah. high school across the country and track and field recruiting we're gonna give carrie one more shot Top Texas sprinter. She's one of the. She's in our top five overall recruiting rankings. Mm -hmm. We looked at the top 50 recruits of this year. Just in, you look at her progression over the years, how strong she is in the sprints. Not just in PRs, but that ability to execute when it matters most. You see, with sprinting, you can't just pop off that fast time in the middle of the season and call and call it a day and be done. Mm -hmm. That sprinting is such a tough mental sport. The seconds, the tenths of seconds matter. And she's shown in the last couple of years that she can do it. As a sophomore, she went to Brooks PR and was on the podium. 
that is tough. And that year was so strong in the sprints with the girls that were there. And for her to come in as a sophomore, she's in a 4A school in Texas. So she's not even competing necessarily at the biggest level against the top athletes in the state of Texas on a week to week basis. As a sophomore, without a lot of experience, she goes out to Seattle, Brooks PR, one of the biggest high pressure meets of the year. She finishes on the podium as a sophomore. I think that speaks a lot to her ability to rise to the occasion. She's not scared by any other athletes. And you can tell, I love following her on social media because she has a lot of personality and you love to see that. And sprinters need that confidence, need that swagger, and it's not cockiness. I mean, with Shakira Richardson, it's definitely not cockiness. I've been able to talk to her a lot over the last couple of years at track me, but there is confidence, but you need that. If you're a sprinter, you don't have that, you're not gonna be a winner. Right. Because you can't, you need to walk into every single race and know that you're gonna win or else you're not gonna be able to execute. And she has that X factor, and that's why she's so successful and why Please she's leave your message for eight, three, two, <laughs> two, six, four, five. All right, so, so we're not gonna like get on the, phone, on the phone, <laughs> but Shakari Richardson has announced her commitment though. Oh, Trent, man. jump on the Twitter, see if you can grab that photo oh. for us or put in Trent, our Trent's corner to the test. But Shakari Richardson has committed. She was looking at some really strong schools between LSU, she was looking at Texas Tech, she was looking at Florida, she went on official visits. I'm going to announce it now while Trent's looking out there, but Shakari Richardson, one of the top recruits in this entire recruiting class, is going to LSU. So LSU, the Tigers picking up a big sprint commit. I don't. This wait, is wait, 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 wait. This? Yeah, I, this is. I see a top your top four, four picks. LSU. She didn't announce it yet. Gators, this is why I'm the Georgia. real goat on this team. <laughs> These guys just struggling right now. The no, wheels are spinning. We're looking I, lost. I, we're asking where you uh, legitimately found it. Yeah, where did you find is it? Is this on Instagram? If you, if you know Twitter, shout out to my Twitter fam. You know what's going on here. LSU track and field state champion sprinter Shakari Richardson. This is a big signing for the Tigers. Where, where did you find this? On LSU? Okay. Twitter. On the photos. Okay. This is a big deal. Courtney Johnson, uh, two years ago, was the top sprinters in the state of Texas out of Italy High School. And she th is crushing it out there. Trent, I'm going to text you the link because these goofs are just struggling right now. Try to get Trent to pull up this photo for you. Trent, coming into your messages right now. Trent's corner. Let's roll. Well, this is big for LSU, getting some strong sprinters out of Texas. They're already one of the top programs in the country. Now they've oh, got man. this recruit. Hey! There, there, it there it is. There it is. There it is. LSU, go Tigers. go Tigers. Goon Squad over here. Guys, no idea what's going on. Apparently, but yeah. That's yeah, really exciting. Just it's signing over day. Here. Signing know, day is no wild. Idea. You just got to stay on your toes. But that's huge. This morning already, we got a ton of top recruits. We had already off the board. Ton of stuff developing, but so you know, chances maybe entire. we can get Shakari Richardson yeah, later maybe. on. I think that would be awesome to be able to just have her talk about that a little bit since she was on you know lockdown before that I decision. Know, right? It'd yeah. be really cool to get her to talk about that. It a has bit. been a great show um, yeah. of commitments already and signings this, this uh, today. So we're going to come back to you at two thirty in the afternoon yep. with a with, with a wrap up show. We're also going to talk to the Keller two Keller cross country talents plus the Notre Dame men's coach. Uh, Sean Carlson, and we might get a couple different athletes on the phone as well. So it's going to be a great uh, second show for you later this afternoon. Yep. Make sure to watch live on Milesplit yep. on Facebook as well. We'll see you Keep soon. Us updated.